Okay. Ethan. Oliver Ralph. Oh yeah, Wolfstone. It's the Wolfstone segment, everybody. <laughs> My boy has been slumbering, hay heaving under the mountain of stress falling upon him, upon him. And lastly, he has only just now awoken and has brought forth hell on his enemies. He says on Twitter, Somebody said I chat the other day that another man calls my son daddy. Well, I guess that makes up for his daughter calling me daddy repeatedly over and over again. Now, almost without, um, he has picked up and returned to his fight against both Matthew Vickers and Harry Morris, the father of the May, the horse. And Matthew Vickers, of course, being the grandfather of Faith Vickers' son, Alexander Ralph. Or Alex, actually, it's Alexander Vickers. He calls him Alexander Ralph, which is kind of cringe. Um, <clears throat> Ralph says, I won't be giving up on my son, Alexander, under any circumstances. 16 years I have left, smile of face. You also won't be adopted by some interloper from Tijuana, LOL. They reneged on the deal, which I should have never even considered. Alexander is my son, no matter the LARPing you engage in. So you remember how his only real friend in the entire world, Dick Masterson, told Ralph on his show that the logical choice for him and for his son is to simply stop the constant litigation and allow uh, and give up parental rights. And then perhaps one day attempt to rekindle a relationship as Xander is an adult, because regardless of what he wants to do, those dang darn evil California lib courts will never let a father take precedence over the mother. Ralph heard these rare pearls of wisdom from the mouth of Dick Masterson and said, uh, Fool, do you realize that you have cast pearls before swine? Literally, a giant pig monster? And thus he uh, ignored them completely and has reignited his crusade against Vickers and rejected his offer. The Vickers has a different story. Uh, though I'll read that in a second. Ralph says, And... Uh, Oh, and I saw the shitty house certain newlyweds are moving into. Legit crack shack. Feel sorry for others who have to live there while I'm, I'm paradise. So Ralph has uh, identified where Faith and his son are living with the Tijuana interloper and is threatening, I suppose, in a roundabout way to dox them where they live. Uh, which is a genius 10 million IQ move, considering that his son that he supposedly cares about lives in the same building as them. So I don't know who this is actually uh, supposed to be intimidating. Ralph also says, sir, I'm just too spiteful for you to break me. Ralph, of course, being very afraid of being buckbroken. But give it your best shot, Ralph, of course, inviting people to buckbreak him. They all hate you. You're a boomer interloper. So now we have a boomer interloper and a Tijuana interloper. I'm the mainstay. Even the haters love me, but they despise you. This is very true. This is actually a correct statement. Um, everyone hates Matthew Vickers. <laughs> Rare Ralph W. Ralph Wynn. A vicious Vickers responds saying, quote, my uncle has more money than your father can dream of. Holy fucking shit. I guess it's a good thing I'm not fun fighting Uncle Clive, who I believe he said is the only one who agreed with Dick Masterson to walk the fuck away. The last person who faced me in civil court, whose story he thinks he's telling about the business theft, but who's never told the story Ralph told, was worth tens of millions. I was worth $60,000 when that guy came at me. Ralph should have looked at how things ended for him. So Vickers puffs out his chest and says, come on, boy, come on, bring it on. Vickers continues saying, 
Don't bother messaging Faith about me anymore. I know you think that we're tied at the hip and sit and conspire all day. Well, here's the lesson, boy. God, they talk the same, too. Here, where you find out just how fucking wrong you were, I already emailed my attorney and told him to stop work on the settlement draft that I sent him. No amount of begging gets me back in. The remaining option is to work it out with faith and hope that I fail. Quote, if you can get him at zero... If you can get him to zero out the fine, I will sign and leave your family alone. Bruh, you shouldn't, you couldn't keep your full mouth shut for 48 hours. So, boom, no deal on the table to stop the defamation lawsuit at the for the expense and health of uh, his grandson. It's time to lawsuit a scorched earth mode and give Ralph no reason to just fuck off anymore. Negotiations is for faggots. Vickers continues saying, already apologizing and backpedaling shit in DMs. As I already said, get fucked. So Ralph apparently said, let's talk this over. Let's be reasonable. And Matthew Vickers said, nah, nah, boy, you, you bad mouth me on your very famous internet podcast called the Ralph Retour. And as you know, as a co competitor in the scene of the, the good, the bad, and the vicious, I ain't giving in to your acquiescent demands uh that's just me i know bitch because you know they're the same fucking person this person explains a little context for the sake of further reading vickers offered ralph the opportunity to sign away his parental rights in exchange for dropping all current and future legal matters ralph has publicly turned on the offer so vickers is spurging on twitter he says i'm out see you in court faith can just des can decide how she wants to move forward separately Dumb fuck should have at least laid it on the tentative ruling on legal fees. And by the way, any private messages of the faith trying to get me back on any deal will be answered with me saying a prompt, get fucked. Just going on and on. I don't want to read all this, to be honest with you. Clipping shit, blah, blah. Look at all this. Jeez. He's like fucking 50 years old, in case you didn't know. Vickers is. Now, I, I of course, in paradise in Serbia, I live the good life. I never have to worry about anything. My days from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep are a bliss without any concerns in the entire world. I do not have any sort of adversaries. I have no enemies. I have no concerns on my day-to-day -day life. And thus, I have no idea what it's like to be under pressure. Ethan Ralph, on the other hand, wakes up every morning and dons the armor of the White Knight in his crusade against the injustices, the demonic evils set before him. And these crushing, the, the crushing depths at which the evil is piled upon him could bring even the most noble man, even the most steadfast, stoic warriors in Christ's light to their knees. And so it is unsurprising that Ethan Ralph, despite his high pain tolerance and uh, healthy coping mechanisms and safeties in his life, such as his adoring wife and supportive family, um, he has resorted back to the peels. You can't hear that, can you? Uh, yes, I know. I never cleaned up my room. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Also, those are water bottles, not. <laughs> you can't hear it, can you? Here he is muted. Even though people are in chat yelling at him that he's muted, he's unable to figure this out. Catharsis, say it one more time, and you're getting banned for life. 
honestly, like, I'm so just like, at what's in it, I don't even care. Uh, does it sound like it's coming through the microphone? Bad quality, yeah. Yeah, that's... Kind of that chair squeak. Kind of reminds me of something else. Why don't I oil that fucking chair? I'm a 450 pound man, dude. You, you know you know how hard it would be for you to sit in the fucking floor and oil this chair? How about you deadlift 250 pounds from a seated position? I said I want to do all of them. My chair is squeaking. A little bit out of season for Christmas music, but I can't help myself. When I hear that chair squeak, I just think like, well, why don't you all that fucking chair? All? <laughs> okay, so you should be able to hear me now. He's just smoking cigarettes now? Since when does he smoke cigarettes? That's a yeah, new habit. I mean, I can... He gave up. He had to. He claims he gave up weed and and uh, and pills and and alcohol. So he just started chain smoking cigarettes. You figure it out, dude. I'm not fucking Gator. Like, it just takes a second. And when you're live on air, what can you do? So, it happened to coincide with the Trump election. <laughs> Where mm. Trump was raising some very Anonymous interesting points, dollars. like Let he goes out and says America first, in the that creates a big problem for the, the, the system that we have, because yeah. the system is basically predicated on sober. foreign influence and corruption. And so when one guy goes up and says America first, loyal pay piggy donates three dollars because Ralph had a breathalyzer, and to prove that he was sober on stream, um. He would t he would literally take a breathalyzer, blow into it, and prove that he was a zero point zero. At some point, he started claiming that uh, he left it in the truck and he didn't want to go out and get it. And now the the loyal pay the pay pig is asking, "Where's your fucking breathalyzer at?" When you're banning people for saying you're not you're not sober. And he just, he literally doesn't even respond here. Suddenly it's a big problem for yep. the people that want Iraq war, Afghanistan war, Syria war, war with Russia, whatever. Free. Not even a response. All jokes, like making fun of Biden and making fun so, of everybody. Roger this Trump night, well, um, there's a, there's a reason. I think that this is it. Maybe, oh, he was just nodding off, I think, before. What happened next? Um, in college Republicans, I was on that track to be a normie conservative influencer. Like, he goes out and says America influence. He's more. just completely like zonked out. <laughs> um, I want to get to. He's just ignoring the clips. Okay, hold up. There's one thing I'm I'm waiting for. Um, this is funny. I'll play this. We owe them, Anonymous you know, we owe them. So it's Mexican weed, then lazy nigger. Let's fucking go. Uh, no, I don't smoke weed, but uh, it's really um, disturbing how badly you want me to smoke weed. See, um, I want you to smoke arsenic, but um. It's really disturbing. I, I, I've never seen anything like it where people want me to get fucked up again uh, just so they can have their jollies. Portland Grow Iper sent $10 just dropping some support. Hope it all works out for you. Right? Thank, thank you, brother. God bless. I appreciate that. I've never seen anything like it. It's like their favorite fucking... Uh, they use the term lol cow, although I'm not. That's just some bullshit Josh Moon made up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, um, what I'm waiting for is uh, he I see that now these clips were actually from the 24-hour fundraiser He's nodding off during a 24-hour fundraiser and you think oh, that's I guess that's normal Like if you're doing a 24-hour thing not much is going on. You don't have other people to keep you awake and it goes off um, He fell asleep Two hours into it and he broadcasted continuously for nine hours straight um, himself sleeping in a chair as pay pigs donated to try and wake him up and uh, he managed to raise a couple hundred dollars over the entire thing <laughs> uh, and what what is this 24-hour extravaganza stream for well it is for a uh, a GoFundMe that he set up It says, because I guess this isn't going to load. I realize this is a lot of money. I have a decent amount of myself. Oh, okay. I love this. I have a decent amount of it myself and will spend it. I plan to dedicate much of my show to my father's rights. It's a lot of money, but they have more resources than me. I hate to beg like this, but I might lose my son. Helping Ethan Ralph fight to see his son by give, send, go. With the quote of Vicious Vicar saying, she might get married. Oh, she gets, this is his offer from last week. She gets married, you fuck off, right? He says, hello, my name is Ethan Ralph. I'm a lowercase uh, internet streamer who love with two loving children. Due to a long-standing family situation, I have been threatened legally and physically, as well as blackmailed simply for trying to see my son, Alexander. I battled in the California court system for nearly two years now, traveling tens of thousands of miles and spending tens of thousands of dollars just to see my own child and support him. However, things have now escalated to the point where I'm being threatened by that same party. The grandfather of my son with an extremely frivolous defamation suit with cost in the hundreds of thousands. At this point, I'm at a crossroads. I can afford quite a bit. I can afford quite a bit. I'll reread that. I can afford quite a bit. But a defamation suit like this is serious and I need help to not have my freedom of speech violated. I need $20,000 in my legal fund at a minimum to help keep myself afloat. I understand it's asking for a lot, but the costs associated are up to 10, 000, 10 times more. It's classic lawfare tactics. Soon after that, grandfather came at me for defamation. He then leveraged my parental rights and used suing me as defama for defamation as blackmail in an attempt to force me to give up total access to my firstborn son. He is blatantly trying to extort me using his own progeny and the few times I get to see him against me. This is not even getting to the legality of the terms, quote unquote, threat, which have been never formally submitted via lawyer, given publicly rather than privately, set on an insane time limit of a mere 24 hours or 48 hours, and how it fails to articulate how my son has anything to do with a defamation lawsuit. The offer itself implies that no serious damages would have been done, and that is still about a personal beef rather than any legitimate legal action. Even worse, while the 48-hour deal was up, I was defamed numerous times by the party on and off stream, including my responses to the supposed offers. Despite claiming to have good faith terms, this is a blatant attempt to ruin my life and keep me quiet, abusing the court system to keep a father down. Shit, man. Them vicars, them California liberal courts always trying to keep a father down. You know, you heard? You know what I'm saying, dog? Shit. All I ever want to do is see my son support him, but along the way, this part has incurred tens of thousands of dollars, a pointless cost to me, and supposedly buying for my son's best interest. However, I have directly confronted family courts, addiction, and endless lawfare with the intent of either locking me up or making me bankrupt. Hours. Prior to the terms being offered, the same man threatened to serve papers at a family visitation center where I see my son. He's planning to use his own minor son, but had a recant when he was told it was not remotely permitted. 
It's a constant uphill battle that's hard for anyone to grasp because many assume it was over years ago. Evidently, this has nothing to do with me supposedly damaging the reputation of a coin shop I've never named or its owner. This is an attack on my parental rights as a father and my ability to provide for my family. Blatant extortion. If you believe my freedom of speech, if you believe in freedom of speech or that a father should be able to support their children unimpeded, please consider donating to my legal fund. 100% of the fees will go to the defense of the defamation suit and any possible remaining additional funds will be allocated towards additional and inevitable lawsuits from the party. So, so all the crying. Um, first of all, this is raised supposedly $1,800, but uh, 500 of that comes from a donor um, who just said Sui or something. He just called him a pig monster, and I don't think that's a legitimate donation. Yeah, $500 from Anonymous saying gunted. So I'm having a feeling that this actually is much lower than it actually is because most of the messages are just fake donations uh, ridiculing him. The other one that's like, it makes me, it makes, in some, without any knowledge of Ethan Ralph, you might feel bad for him. However, if you don't know anything about Ethan Ralph and you read this statement, at this point, I'm at a crossroads. I can afford quite a bit. So this person who is asking, literally begging on the street like a homeless man for money for his lawsuit, uh, which was created because of his own words and actions towards a, a person that he could easily, 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 on a day-to-day -day basis, completely and totally fucking ignore um, and be much better off as a consequence. But because of this ongoing dipshit ass redneck feud with this fat retard named Matthew Vickers. He uh he is being sued and he says I can't afford quite a bit. So even in this moment of weakness where he has to grovel for change from his audience, he still has to insist that he's a heckin' heckin' wealthy. He's a big spender. He goes to the Las Vegas and eats the one hundred dollar plain beef steaks on a plastic plate with no garnish or anything because he's such a fucking champion, such a high roller, so much wealthier than everyone else who makes fun of him. Um, and uh, that is in direct contrast to what he's trying to achieve. Nobody. Nobody would read a message like this and think, oh, I got to donate because you're thinking, oh, well, you probably apparently from this statement, I can afford quite a bit. You have more money than I have to give. So therefore, go pay for it your fucking self. You know what I mean? Like Whatever, bro. So it looks like he's really hurting. He's been threatening to commit suicide a bunch. And now after all this drama, oh, this is a nice picture. My son totally not going to blow it on drugs and hookers. Oh, that's the other thing. This goes straight to Ethan Ralph, by the way. So it's not like Ralph consulted an attorney in California, someone who is familiar with family courts and civil torts, possibly, who would be uniquely suited for dealing with a complex situation like this. And he set up a trust where the money goes in to uh, you know, pay for the ongoing litigation fees. It goes directly to him. So nothing legally stops Ralph or even, you know, it's not like it goes to an account he doesn't have control over. It, it goes directly to his um, to his bank account. So he will spend whatever the fuck he wants it to, and everyone knows it, which is why even his own pay picks are not giving him money. Uh, Ralph claims that, I realize this is a lot of money. Oh, I read that already. Thank you for your outpouring of support. Uh, they're not cutting my son out of my life, and your help and make sure that never happens. Thank you. Shopping attorneys tomorrow. Still a ways to go, but a great start. Thanks again. Um, then he's when the next morning he's out hollering again. He says, Harry sure has a lot to say about separation, but nothing to say about his wife cheating on him and abandoning him with his daughters. Why is that fuckhead embarrassed you got cut by a bartender, no less? 
I would be if I were you. Thankfully, I'm not. So he's like already, he's, as he's begging for money to fend off a defamation lawsuit with uh, Vickers, he then decides to go and piss off the other baby daddy for literally no reason when he was supposedly trying to keep on good terms with them so that he could see um, Rosie and possibly patch things up with May. He then he's... And the difference between me and you, fat, crippled fuckhead, is that I have another bitch. I could have another bitch, theoretically speaking, in the world of infinite bitches. I could have another bitch tomorrow. You've been alone for a decade plus, no gumption, no skills, and you look like a piece of garbage the dog dragged in. Hideous. Whenever Ralph tries to lash out at people, he really does present his insecurities you could just immediately whenever you write shit like that you can just say oh yeah he's talking about himself <laughs> he's he's using those specific words and those specific phrases because uh those are things that if said about him hurt his feelings so that's that's what he chooses to go with he's so transparent and then finally to top off all his genius gambits and enter the real 1000 IQ realm of Ralph Amell decisions. He says this. I am going to South Africa under the protection of the Sudlanders and Simon Roche, August. So being sued by baby daddy one conflict with baby daddy two, living in Mexico, begging for money because he doesn't have any cash to spend to, to fight off the defamation lawsuits he started. What's his plan? What's he's going to do? He's going to take a trip to one of the most dangerous shitholes in the entire fucking world for no reason. Halfway across the fucking planet. A nice little trip to South Africa. Um, and then Harry Morris is just replying to a couple of things he said. Poop emoji. Classic. Um, making fun of Ralph nodding off, saying, when I played this, someone close by reacted favorably to the music, which I assume means that um, the baby hears the music from his show all the time because he plays the same eight songs over and over again. So she heard that and thought, oh, I, I recognize that. Ralph replies saying, fuck you. Harry, I played quite a few songs and your daughter reacted insatiably. Fucker, remember that tonight when you two two sleep. Actually, he doesn't even say. Is he saying say? Oh, he says reacted insatiable. Fucker, he says Harry sure has outlet to say about my separation, but nothing to say about his wife cheating on him and abandoning him with his daughters. Uh, and the difference. Oh, I read that. Uh, Harry replies saying, "I know he doesn't mean all that, and it's just the substances and lack of proper upbringing and talking. It really makes you wonder if the other product of Sandra and Roddy was the actually the fortunate one." So he brings up Ralph's retarded brother who lives in a home, Evan Evan Ralph, uh, and says that he's the better of the two, which is probably objectively a true statement. Um. He says, oh, and I know a lot more than you think. Hurts, doesn't it? Laugh and cry on emoji. And I mean every word. How's that inheritance going, Pops? It's a word with two O's. So I guess he's trying to learn Dutch. That seems like a Dutch word, so to speak. That's it. That is your Ralph Amale update. Hot and spicy. Melting down. Hemorrhaging cash. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.